Hi everyone, my name is Jeff and I like to think of myself as a fused glass artist. Today I'm going to show you how to make some cabochons out of fused glass part sheets just like these. Welcome to Rocket Rose Art. The project today is about making cabochons from part sheets. I like part sheets because you can be really creative with these. You can create an endless range of uh, patterns and, and designs that you can then use in your larger fuse glassing pieces. But you can also use them to make cabochons. Now today I'm not going to talk so much about how to make part sheets. I'm just going to talk more about making cabochons from part sheets. As usual, if you haven't been here before and you like these videos or you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and turn on your notifications. If you've got any questions or comments, put them in the comments section below and I will reply to them. Just quickly about part sheets. I'm not going to talk or show you how to make part sheets today, but if you wanted to find out, I do have a video on making part sheets and I'll put a link to that in the description below. So these are just some examples of part sheets. This one was made on white, three more white, and it's got a thin pattern bar on the top that was made from using fine frit. Same as this one. This one was made using fine frit, three mil white, with a little bit of the coarse frit scattered on top. So it still has a thin pattern bar on top. But this one here is um, six mil. It, whoops. It was made using three mil on the bottom but a lot of coarse frit on the top. So we've got about six mils thick and hence we've got a quite a thick pattern bar on top. In the back we've got some examples of cabochons that we're trying to achieve. There's a small pair here that could be made for earrings. These could all be used for um, pendants or something like that. You can see that one there has a nice depth of colour to the top of it. This is made from that 6mm um, pattern bar and you can see that the pattern extends right around to the sides. So there are examples of what we're going to start with and what we're hoping to achieve at the end. When it comes to making cabochons from part sheets there are a couple of things you need to be aware of. One of them is what I call pattern bar erosion and that's just simply you're using some sort of process that's eroding the pattern bar off the top of the cabochon. And the other one is bordering. And that's where you end up with a single color as a border around the pattern on the cabochon. Just one of the things I mentioned is pattern bar erosion. That's really self-explanatory. It's the eroding of the pattern on the top through some process that we use. And that can be hand cutting to get the cabochon to a better shape and size or it can be things like uh, sandblasting if we've got divot on the top. If you've got divot on the top you would probably need to put some clear frit on the top and refuse it. Now it only applies really to these part sheets that have a very thin pattern bar on the top. Um, so if you've got a part sheet like that that you're going to use Sorry, you're probably stuck with the size and the shape as it comes out of the kiln. Now with the 6mm, the pattern bar erosion is not really a problem. As you can see, we've got a very thick layer on the top. So even if we fuse this and then want to hand cut the cabochon, we won't lose that pattern bar. It should go right around the side of the cab. And if you want to um, sandblast this, simply because you've got some divot on the top, that's also not going to be a problem. The other thing I mentioned was bordering. And all bordering is, is you can see on these little cabs here, you can see the white background colour around the pattern. And on this one here, you can see, I'll pick it up and show you, you can see how the background colour shows around the edge. It sort of creates a border. 
Now you may like that or you may not. Uh, you can actually design for it if you like. Um, but one of the ways to reduce that is to make the background color a relevant color. For example, with these ones here, it could have been just a dark brown, could have even been black, and we could have even made it blue. Same with this, we could make the background color, the glass that we use, um, what we could do. Blue there, say for example. So it's up to you whether you like it or you don't like it. And um, um, yeah, just design for it basically. Now there is a little fix that we can do for this. And if you notice this cab here, you don't see the border. Now the fix is fairly simple. What we do is with the material before it's fused, and we will, you do have to cut it into your shape first, such as an oval, we undercut that edge on the bottom there. And then when it's fused, that pattern tends to wrap a little bit further around the cab. Not a great deal, but just enough so the border disappears. And if you're putting that in a bezel, you'll probably hide the background colour, but in a, in a uh, prong setting, you'll still see it. When it comes to cutting part sheets, you can just score and snap, just as you do with other glass, and you may not have any problems. But sometimes the, um, the run, it doesn't run properly because the material used in the pattern bar at the top causes problems. Now, if you find that, it's safer to just simply use a diamond wheel or a ring saw or something like that to cut the pattern bar into the shapes you need. So I'll get on now and I'll show you how I prepare the part sheets to make the cabochons. So these are the pieces of part sheets that I'll be using today. I'm going to cut each one slightly differently. This one I'm just going to cut into a rectangle and then I'll go in the kiln like that. Another one I will cut um, into a, or I should say I will grind into an oval shape and I'll leave it like that. And then another one, probably that one, I will grind into an oval shape but then I'll undercut the edge. And in that way you'll be able to see the difference between them after they've been fused. Same. They'll all be fused together using the same firing schedule.
My apologies, I stuffed up again. I didn't take a little bit of video of the pieces showing you the undercut before I fused them. But I think in the grinding uh, clip you should be able to get a good indication of the undercut. Um, basically put as much undercut as you can um, without obviously making it too thin. Anyway, I'll move over onto the other camera and I'll show you the end result. So these are the final caps. These are in order of grinding, I believe. You can see that one there has a very, that's the one by the way that I cut into a rectangle shape. It has a very obvious border around it because I haven't undercut it at all. This is the one that I ground down into the oval shape. Again, that wasn't undercut and you can see the border around it. And this is the final one that I ground down into an oval but then I undercut it. And you see it has a, well it doesn't have any border. And um, I'll just show you the cabs because they're nice cabs. This is, you can't really see the depth in that because there is quite a bit of depth in the, in the pattern of that. That gives you an idea of what can be achieved with part sheets. And the blue one, same thing. Not so much depth in that, but really nice pattern. Well, I hope that encourages you to give this a go. I think using part sheets for cabochons is great. It gives you a whole new range of uh, patterns that you can use. And cabochons with those patterns do look good. In fact, in fact a lot of them look very organic, very much like uh, gemstones. Anyway, um, hopefully, hopefully that will be all of use to you. And um, remember, if you uh, have any questions, put them in the comments. And if you want to watch a couple of videos right now, um, you'll find a couple of suggested ones up the top and down the bottom. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe. And until the next video, I will say bye for now.